Oh yeah, everyone, Keith Dawson, you do the post-match reaction for the Dublin derby last night between us and Bowles. Um, we won one nil on the night, Rory Gaffney got a goal in the 24th minute, I think it was. Um, it was a good game, like, that was me that side stood out, like, it wasn't like, we got better on Bowles, or Bowles were better on us, like, it was, like, every typical derby, all, like, form and all that, all types of players go out the window. It's just, whoever is playing better on the night will win the game, like, it doesn't matter. Whether we're top of the league and Bowser at like six or seven or Bowser top of the league and we're six or seven, like it doesn't matter form and like all that type of shit doesn't come into derbies. It's just who's better on the night. Um Bowser's going into the game, I think they were four and beating three wins and one draw against us. We were obviously trying to stop that and we did last night. Um I thought Rouse played well in the first half, I thought the first twenty to twenty five minutes we were on top. Um and that resulted in the goal, like, you look at it, like, I think it was Jack played the ball in, him, Self, Gaffney and Finn were playing the ball to each other, um, a good few times beforehand, like, I think it was Finn that played it to Gaffney, a mix up between two defenders, it might be in Tyreek and that young fellow Horton, you now it could be corrected on that, and Gaffney poked the home near post, it looked like poor goalkeeping from our end, like, at the start, after watching the videos back of it, it seemed like that, uh, Talbot's line of view was obstructed. Um, but prior to that, no, it was a good goal. Like, it's a good way to take it, especially in the derby. Like, once it goes in the back of the net, that's all the fans care about. Like, I think Bowers in the first half they didn't really amount to anything. And it's no disrespect towards them because in the second half it, the table's turned. Like, we gave them a lot more chances than we should have, in my opinion. Uh, Rob should have put the game to bed in the first half. Like, we had two or three chances that were clear cool. And we just didn't take them. And that's like plain simple part of it. We just didn't take them in the second half. Bowles had a few chances, they didn't take them. That's the way the derby goes. Um, my standout player for last night was probably one of our defenders, either Pico or Lee Grace. I thought about where I was standing last night. I thought Roman Finn had a very good game. I also thought, um, off Bowles, I thought Stephen Mallon was good. And I thought that, um, Youngfle in the middle of the park, not uh, Dawson, the other Youngfle, I thought he was already. But um, no, it was a good game, good displays by both sides, to be honest, I really liked the Rovers one, and I thought the Bowers one was good as well. Uh, the atmosphere was great, as always, in the derby, and listen, we're going into Monday now, we have Dundalk, it's going to be a hard game, I know Bowers have shells as well, so that'll be a hard game for them. Going to Monday, look for three points, I'll be happy to know, I know it sounds stupid, we're going into it again, we'll be happy to take one off Dundalk at the moment, the way they're playing, but uh, all in all, Every win scored like first win and five like I'm happy with it all together. Like I said, all in all, great game. Uh, referee was shocking, but better a good game between the two good sides, and hopefully another good game next month when we play them again. Hi everyone, match reaction to Shamrock Rovers one Bohemians nil. Rory Gaffney separating the two sides. Um, obviously Finn setting them up for putting them in and them slotting at home. Um. Look, firstly, I think it was great to see, you know, a really big bump of crowd there, 7,500 fans, excellent, really, really good crowd throughout the league, and long may it continue, it was brilliant, and it was just great to see such a big crowd back after all the hassle we've had over the last few years, but um, I suppose moving on to the game, um, I think I don't really think we were ever really in it, obviously, I get into the second half, and but we were much better in the second half, but starting off, you know, it, it was, we're over, it's like, you know, we had nothing going on in the first up front, um, Rovers were kind of in control a little bit, they were dominating, they were getting passes, they were playing office, they were getting forward, they were trying to put balls into the box, they were trying to make things happen and you know Ryan Cassidy you know he was up there on his own, he was put into the deep ends getting the start for the club and you know missing Georgie Kelly obviously gone and missing you know the, the likes of Promise who has really come on the leaps and bounds the last few seasons and Especially last season, in particular towards the end of it, like missing him was was big for us. I thought I think you know he might give us a bit more up front, but it shows that we're lacking you know options up front at the minute. And look, I think we're always going to be lacking a few bodies in different positions every season. It's just the way it's going to be. But Rovers have an abundance of talent. Like if you even look at their subs, the likes of Richie Towell coming on, Barry Carter coming on, um, Danny Mandrew, like the the names go on for the talent Shamrock Rovers has in the bench and. Big shouts for a penalty, very big shouts, and I think it was a penalty. I think he was took right down for his penalty for me. Um, I just think it was a penalty, and it wasn't given to us. But you know, of another day, he will be given to us, so we can't, 
you know, we can't really dwell on it too much. Um, look, I was just a bit disappointed with Wolves' performance. I think the team of last season might have done a lot better, but look, we can't keep comparing ourselves to last season. We need to, you know, move on with what we have this season and back the lads and get behind them and believe what we can do. And it's a long, long season to go on. I've no doubt that we'll, you know, we'll keep pushing and we'll get more results on the table. Like this Shamrock Rovers team, they're, they're unbelievable players all around. Like they're bench of walking to any any team I throughout the league and start really so the good for quality is it's big but it was great you know um yeah look I'm just disappointed that we lost the game overall disappointed you know we had a few chances um obviously Talbot made a very very good save as well he pushed one of his shots into the post and you know it was point blank range and all and he got behind it and stopped it so um yeah he did okay and um, we thought Wilson did okay as well um yeah, Feely got up and down, his long throws were great. I think if you could get a few of them into the box for it up the field, we'd, we'd create problems for teams going forward. Devoy was alright, he spread the play as much as he could, but I think if another day he could have done a bit more for us, really. Um, it was good to see Jamie Williams come on as well, get a few minutes under his belt, you know. He's very young, and what a big game for him to be coming on and playing in. Really, really good. But look, it, you know, Shelburne now, Monday night, is what we need to focus on and, you know, put his result behind us, because... I'm sure the players are very disappointed in it, because I, I am anyway, but look, we're always disappointed from losing the Dublin Derby. When you win it, it's the best thing in the world, but when you lose it, it's disappointing. And look, it's just the way the game went. We wasn't, we weren't up for it, we just weren't at the races, we weren't up to Shemmick Grover's level in the night, and um, I, I, I kind of disagree with anyone that thinks we should have got something out of the game. I don't really think we should have. Um, we got what we deserved, in my opinion, and the Grover's were the better team on the night, really, and they got the win. Um, we obviously, as I said, made a few chances, but nothing enough to actually trouble the keeper or trouble their defence or give Shamrock Rovers something to think about. So, look, Rovers got to win the night. It's all but Monday night now, so come on, the boys. Well, that was a fucking disaster. 3 0 to Sligo at home, at home against us. No, sorry, away to us there. At a, a home ahead in the game pack. Um, you know, nothing good. Open badly in defence. You know, midfield was no creativity midfield at all as well. And even the forward line, there's nothing even towards the forwards in that game. You know, Foley and Williams down front, there was nothing there for them. There was a few chances, but, you know, slim chances. You know, they were just no one They were not going to affect the game at all anyway. But, um, you know, fair play to Sligo. They got the win tonight. They were the better team, no doubt. And um, I'm getting worried. I'm already getting worried ahead in this season. Um, we've got Derry now Monday night. Can't say it's getting a result there. We've got Dundalk on Friday night. You know, for us now to get a result in this crap town, uh, look, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be very tough. Um, it's obviously quite disappointing now. Uh, you know, I had, you know, at start of the year, I was thinking to myself, look, we're not going to do what we did last year. You know, get to your, like, you know, be fourth or fifth, you know, in... Some of the season and trying obviously stay up and we stayed up there big time. We overachieved last year, but I think even this year, you know, we're going to be bottom of the, bottom of the league now from for the whole of the year. You know, tenth, ninth, eighth. Um, you know, there's not much I can really say tonight. Just in other words, just one way of saying it, it's a fucking disaster. It was a bad enough game for us tonight, so we have to really fucking address the issue and try and work on what we can do now for the. For the rest of the season, even the games that come against Derry and Dundalk, you know, two big, massive games that are home and away. So, yeah, look, I'm not even looking forward to Bush. Come here, we have to try and get something, no matter what. So, uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. This is my fan reaction to last night's victory against Strahda United. The game ended 3 0 uh, for the Rovers. And, uh, yeah, what can I say, really? It's a fantastic result and it's a fa- fantastic performance. Uh, defensively, we look really, really solid, which is great to see. Uh, considering look, we we lost Matham there at the start of the season, um, and but Nando's come in and he's been absolutely superb. I think he complements Buckley quite well. I think the two of them work very well. Uh, Buckley last night again, absolutely fantastic. Um, his fiftieth appearance for Rovers, and he gets better every time he plays. Just what a player! He's been absolutely fantastic since he's joined us. Um, and Paddy Kirk as well had a very, very solid game. Uh, he looks to be a very good player. Um, last week, especially against Dundalk, I thought he was very good. But last night, again, he was fantastic. 
Um, middle of the park as well. The likes of Moore and McDonald, very, very good. Fitzgerald, what a goal he got. Carol Sullivan played very well. And then the two up top, Mata and Hamilton, were very good. Uh, first kind of proper looking we've got of them. And I thought they were very good. Hamilton with a very good header for his goal. Uh, Mata played quite well. Unlucky not to get a goal himself. Um, but yeah, look, I thought we dominated that game from start to finish. I thought Draw had a couple of hand, half chances. Nothing really to test Richard Brush. Um who was covering for Ed McGitty, who had an illness, so he couldn't play the game. Uh, so it was nice to see Richard Brush back in, and a clean sheet is always a bonus as well. Uh, but yeah, look, I had a couple of half chances, nothing really too major, and they had the penalty also that they missed. Um, but yeah, I just thought a lot of positives to take out of that game. Uh, four games in, unbeaten, one goal conceded. It's the perfect start. Uh, hopefully we can build on this now. Uh, two very good games coming up now next week with Finn Harps at home and then Charlotte Rovers away. Uh, so hopefully we can pick up some more points, uh, keep this unbeaten streak going. Because um, a lot of people, I think, including a lot of Rovers fans, I'd say, uh, probably underestimated us this season. Looked losing two big players with Mahan and Kenny. Uh, it was always going to be difficult to replace them. But it looks like Rovers got the recruitment spot on this year because all of our new sidings look very, very good. Um, so yeah, positives all around and we look forward to Finn Harps on Monday Hi guys, just back from Dundalk Shelburne there where it finished one all. Uh wasn't a fantastic game but it was decent enough, I think uh, the first half Shelburne got the better of the exchanges really pressing Dundalk but uh, no real chances right? well, the, they had one chance that was skied completely over the bar and well out of the stadium to be honest uh, yeah um, Dundalk had one shot, I think, uh, Sam Bone straight at the keeper. But uh, other than that, it was mainly fall around the midfield and Shelburne seemed to get the better off it. But uh, in the second half then, Steve O'Donnell made a couple of uh, changes. They uh, made a change straight away, taking Bradley off for uh, Daniel Kelly. But then pretty much straight away, Kelly came off as well. But uh, yeah, he made a couple of more changes then. And really, after that, Dundalk took control of the game and went one nil up around the 70th minute and it was yeah it, it was coming it was coming it was a good header by pat hoban and we set peace and dundalk looked like they were cruising until nine minutes of the game and uh referee awarded shelburne a penalty have to say watching it live did not think it was a penalty to, to be honest you can't see it really too well but uh looking back yeah he did he, he, it was a penalty right decision uh i have to say the referee got an awful lot wrong in that game but uh, I do think it was a penalty and then it won all and to be honest it's probably fair overall but uh, it showed good signs from Dundalk I think where Stephen O'Donnell realised the problem was in midfield that we were being swamped and was able to make a couple of substitutions and change it and actually Dundalk became better in the midfield so it was really a uh, Good to see that type of thing, you know, a good new manager being able to do that. And of course, given uh, he gave young Mark Hanrady uh, his first start for Dundalk, which is always great to see a bit of youth getting thrown into the deep end, as they say. But uh, yeah, so it wasn't the best game, wasn't the worst game. We didn't get beat. That was the main thing, I think. Uh, still undefeated in the league, which is fantastic compared to last year. And we move on now to Shamrock Rovers on Monday night, which will be very interesting. So, thanks very much. Hi Keith, um, finished our City 2, um, Cove 0. Um, a deserved result. Um, City dominated the game most, but anyway, the first half anyway. Cove running for about 15 minutes and City for about a 20 minute spell. They camped Cove back into their own box, in the fairness to Cove. They were very resilient and cleared the ball off the line a couple of times. Um, great atmosphere here, 4,200 here again, which is fantastic for a, a Cork Derby. Um, second half, Cove came back into that a couple of chances there. Um, and I'd say Darren Murphy, I'd say he gave him a right good run over a half time, I'd say, because City looked like it could have been five a half time to City. Um, but they made, they, like Cove improved so much in the second half and it changed. Um, um suppose really the, the second goal and Key Murphy killed the game off and you know City I think they deserved winners tonight. Um uh, nice to see Key Murphy score. 
Uh, Aaron Balzer played well in midfield. Matt Healy played well in midfield. Barry Coffey played well. Um, King Coleman got injured after about 20 minutes, I'd say. So he was replaced then. Um, but um, nice to get a win here and great atmosphere again. Um, nice to get a win and on to Monday night against Waterford. Tough game. Thanks, Keith. And it's Blues 2, Wexford 1. And uh, look, I'm going to not even acknowledge the win because the performance was so dire that it really didn't feel like a win. I thought we were uh, awful for large parts of the game. Really, uh, Wexford would feel aggrieved to not come away with a point, but their uh, finishing let them down seriously. Um, I mean, I don't know where to begin. We were completely overrun in the field and our attacking strategy mounted to just lumping the ball up the field to Louis Britton. And that could only work for so long because by the 90th minute he was completely exhausted. And that brings me on to my next point. You make a sub when a player is exhausted or in the case of, let's say, for, exi- for instance, Shane Griffin, who wasn't having a great game. You, you know, if a player isn't having a great game, you take him off. And I don't understand why Ian Morris is so reluctant to make those changes. I mean, it's seriously costing us uh now when we could be dominating games you know uh, what happens when teams figure out how to play us and it costs us points uh, it, i mean i'd like to know what his analysis is of the games because from where he's sitting he doesn't appear to think there's anything wrong because he's not making the changes we've got the players on the bench it's not like seasons past where we might have only had you know 13 players that were capable of playing we have a good squad this season and he's not making use of it the other thing as well is that the the tactical formation of playing sort of the four up front it isn't working because we're seriously light uh, in midfield as I said earlier on we need Niall O'Keefe or Callum Stringer or Tamise Sobowale uh, in there someone who will break up the opposition play and win the ball because I know Shane Griffin is being asked to fill that role but that's not his natural position so you know questions uh, haven't been answered from last week or the week before that or since the season started And they're seriously going to have to be answered now because teams are going to figure out how to play us. And if we are not ready for that, then uh, it could be a long mid-season for us. Hey guys, full time in Carlisle. Uh, Bright Wonders, another defeat, um, another convincing loss. Um, In fairness, they they battled hard this week. um, But ultimately, Galway, uh, 3-1 winners. Um, Hugh Douglas with the Bray goal. And... uh, there's two breakaway goals for Galway. Um, see, uh, Shane Doherty laid on, um, late, late on, and uh, Stephen Walsh, who came off the bench, uh, scored uh, Galway's second. Um, Huey Douglas uh, headed in for a free kick um, on 69 minutes, but uh, very frustrating football. Um, Michael Kelly, our goalkeeper, every goal kick, every time he had the ball in his hands. Um, there was no, there was no showing from the Bray defence. Uh, I could see visibly Connor Clifford getting very, very frustrated in the middle of the park because everything was bypassing uh, Connor, and uh, was, uh, he was frustrated. But Jesus, in the stands, you could hear, uh, you could, you could actually, it was, it was very audible that people were giving out that uh, our goalkeeper uh, was kicking everything wrong. Um, that's so annoying. Ten goals conceded in three games for Bray, and one goal. Uh, Rob Manley was on the bench tonight, he came off the bench and again um, didn't really offer much and again through no, no fault of his own. Um, Galway are a good side, Caulfield, he has some playing uh, same old Caulfield football but they get the result done and um, they go on, they march on, um, they set me up there at the end of the season but for Bray, rock bottom and uh, it's absolutely, absolutely not, not good football. Uh, and I can't see it improving. Uh, Longford on Monday, and uh, we'll see where that takes us. But uh, finished in the Carlisle. Bray Wanderers one, Galway United three.